My name is Michael with Iconicist. Today I'll be walking you through the editing feature Magic Wand tool within our Shutterstream and Shutterstream 360 software. This tool is designed to make background removal, whether you need a pure white background or a transparent background, very fast and efficient for users of any skill level. The setup that we'll be using today is a Canon camera connected via USB to our computer. The medium LumiPad 360 lighting kit, this consists of two front tower lights and a backlight panel, as well as our silver mid-turn table, along with the acrylic riser. So our subject will be a figurine here, and what I'm going to do is just take this and place it in the center of our turntable. That's going to give us a real-time preview on our monitor, as you might be able to see here. But what we'll do is turn the attention over to the software, and I'll walk you through the workflow. All right, so the first thing that we can see inside of the software is obviously a real-time preview. Um, and within that real-time preview, users do have a lot of different settings here. First and foremost, what we could do is make changes to our camera settings. Uh, for instance, maybe we want to take our shutter speed from 1 15th to 1 25th of a second um, just to try to find the optimal um, camera settings for the lighting that we're working with to get the correct color accurate result. And looking at the setting that we have right now, it's pretty good, so we won't change anything else on our camera settings. The next thing that we can do is adjust our manual focal point. We can see we're a little bit out of focus here, and we can start to make changes through mouse clicks and adjust our focal point if required. Um, it's looking, that should be okay though. Um, now our next step will be to pre-crop our subject. That will be enable our crop marker here, click and drag over our subject, and then we just wanna hit our snap button. So that's kind of the standard image capture workflow that we would walk through. If we hit live view, it's gonna remember all our settings again, and what we could do if required is just move our object, get our second angle, and hit our snap button, and so forth. So more specifically, going into this automated background removal tool, we're going to take our two images and enter into the editing mode. Now this is where all you can make all your adjustments, um, you know, color adjustments, sharpness, um, background removal, etc. So the feature that we're discussing is our magic wand tool. And I will click this little button right up here. And what this is going to do is, and let me just drop all the settings down. And we'll kind of go through those quickly. But what it's going to do is understand uh, the magic wand tool essentially is going to pick up like color pixels and remove them. If you're familiar with Photoshop and their magic wand tool, it's, uh, it's basically the exact same thing here, just laid out a little bit differently. So... Um, what we want to do is increase our threshold and you probably don't see much and I should probably just blink the transparent area because it might be a bit easier to see. As I increase my threshold, basically it's giving a bigger tolerance of the color of pixel that I'd selected from the background. If you recall, I've clicked somewhere in the background and it picked an individual pixel and that color would have been whatever color that pixel was where I clicked and it's going to use that as kind of the reference pixel. And based on that pixel, it's going to, as I increase my threshold, it will give you a bigger variance of colors that it will start to pick out from the subject. For instance, you can see on the, the white on the figurine's eye um, is similar to the white on the background. So the higher I increase my threshold, the more it's going to cut that out. So we want to find a good threshold value. And the other thing we want to look at is shadows underneath our subject here. So, and shadows are going to be, typically we have to increase our threshold quite high for shadows and or reflections. And that's what we just got rid of there. So, we're going to use the threshold of 20. Um, a couple more things that we have is edge blending. And, pardon me, sensitivity is just going to help kind of um, the sensitivity of the actual pixel. And then we have a hole fill radius. If there was an area that you needed to fill, you could increase your, your hole fill. Um, speck removal, if there's little specks, maybe dust or dirt, um, you could increase that slider to get rid of that stuff. And then this one I like to use is the mask grow radius. Um, you can see typically there's a little white hue around um, the subject. So typically what we would do is just increase our mask grow radius. 
And what this is, it's just a pixel value. So I'm just increasing by two pixels to eat into our subject. And then we also have edge blending. Um, I typically don't really use that. Maybe one just to kind of soften the cutout. So um, that looks pretty good there. The other option would have been unconstrained selection. That would basically, would be the difference between constrained and unconstrained selection is constrained will stop at a hard edge. It won't eat inside of a product. Whereas if it's unconstrained selection, it will eat inside. So a good example of when you'd use unconstrained selection is maybe it's a bracelet with a bunch of kind of holes inside of it that you need removed as well. You would use the unconstrained selection. Whereas this is a solid product that we won't really need to use that. So I will just hit apply and or apply to all since I have two images and whether it's two or 10, it'll be done in a batch process. And as we can see there pretty quickly, it gives us a nice cutout image one and image two. And what we can do is go ahead and inspect that and we can start to say, okay, looking at our image, it gave us a really nice cutout there. Um, and we're kind of, uh, you know, on to shooting our next product. Now, let me just exit out of this and we could save these images out, do the battery sizing, processing, etc. if we needed to. Um, I won't be doing that right now. Um, what I'll do is move to a next step for you. If you further wish to, if you don't want to go into the editing tools, you can actually automate that process. So what I could say is in the options area, I'm going to choose BR options and I'm going to say apply BR after capture, use magic wand. And what I can do now is when I hit snap, it's automatically going to take the picture again, but it's going to be a little bit different and automatically make that editing adjustment for me. So that is our automated editing tool for the magic wand. If you have any questions, let us know. And pardon me, one thing I should have mentioned is um, the background will be transparent. Um, you can output in multiple different formats through this software. Um, two of the options will retain the transparent background. Those are PNG and TIFF image format. If you output as a JPEG, it cannot kind of retain the transparent pixels. So what you could say is you could put it on any background you want. For instance, um, I would say use a background color of, you know, green or whatever color I, I want, white or yellow, and it will automatically do that for me. So again, the company's Iconesis. If you have any questions, please let us know. Thank you.